Hey, beautiful human beings, whoever's watching this. Welcome to our hour, hour, 10 minute session today. Uh, we'll be walking you through an introductory level sequence for elemental Thai massage based on the practices of Zen Thai Shiatsu and Thai Vedic, two amazing schools um, with Sebastian Bruno leading Thai Vedic as the body worker and Kimana Nichols as and one of the other profound teachers, as well as Gwyn Williams uh, teaching Zen Thai Shiatsu. My name is Bodhi Samuel, and I'll be walking you through today's sequence. So I'll be talking as well as instructing, and you can just like put headphones in when you're giving a treatment, that will help out. This is Juliet. Hello. Thanks for joining me today. She'll be this like beautiful human being that will be offering deep, tender love and care to, and a lot of therapy. This is a beautiful therapeutic practice, and I'm really glad that you're joining me. In addition to that, I got in a motorcycle, <laughs> motorcycle accident yesterday. <laughs> so I'll be moving really slow, and that'll be even more beneficial for this practice for any beginners. But I have this beautiful cast on. It's not a cast. I just can't remember what it's called. A wrap. A wrap on. So we'll work with that today, too. <laughs> Welcome. Let's, uh, let's do this. Cool. So have you laid down on your back? The things that we'll need to start the practice are a few yoga mats maybe. We're using three yoga mats. What's more preferred is like a thin mattress, um, kind of like a mattress pad or a mattress topper. We have a pillow as well. I usually have a speaker. We made a little altar. The flowers blew away, but we have our little Hanuman meditating here at the top for Juliet to hold the space. I'll take a moment to honor this beautiful being Bring our hands to heart center or to the third eye. And take the next few moments to set whatever intention. Set the space energetically, creating maybe a bubble, bubbling up around you and around your partner. And just resting in the simple gratitude of being alive in this moment, the life force energy that runs through both of us the beautiful sounds. And breathing deeply. As we begin our moving meditation. So the first touch is the most important. We call it the first snowfall of the year. So our hands very gently find like snow falling on the earth. our first touch. Once we begin touching the body, we don't leave the body. As we begin this conversation, moving left and right, the elbows are straight. And we simply lean back and forth, no force. Using gravity to simply pour our weight as we nest and pour into the soles of the feet. I'm looking at Juliet's belly as her breath rises and falls. I'm just keeping an eye. I can close my eyes as well to listen even deeper to the tissues, to the soft tissue of the soles of her feet. Beautiful. We roll the ankles in hook, lift the legs, bring them together. I come closer so that the pads of her feet meet my belly. We just rest here for a moment. Allowing a deep groundedness. And I gently lean forward, compressing the spine. I take my hands wrap around her feet and pull backwards. I can do a little shake. Compression, expansion. You'll notice their head will say yes and no as we're working the entire spine from this direction. Opening the vertebrae, decompressing any tension in the vertebrae. This is wonderful for any discs, pinched discs. Just place discs. If 
finding a gentle pressure and compression. I can walk with my hands up toward the knees and rotate the knees. This is like the best gesture in the world. It feels so nice. And breathing. Enjoying, feeling the full aspect of your hand, a perfect fit on the kneecaps. My hands come underneath the knees, supporting the knees. I pull back and up and press the knees toward the belly. Belly to chest, knees to chest is what I meant to say. And we just do a little back and forth like a happy baby. We call this the happy bus driver. <laughs> and we open the pelvic floor. We're moving around with the pelvis, the pelvic bowl loosening any tension in the lower back. This is great lower back therapy. We can take a deep breath in and exhale, lean, gentle compression toward the earth. This will look different depending on the person. The legs can also come together as well to offer a different experience. My left knee comes down, my right knee comes up. I press the legs together, hold them with one hand. My other hand finds the ankles and I gently find a double leg hammock. That's what we call it. We find a perfect fit and find your perfect fit with the body. Maybe I need to come lower, maybe I need to come higher, but the, the crease of the back of the knee finds my leg perfectly. Once that happens, I cross the close leg, the leg closest to me, outward, and I bring both legs in closer. We're gonna do a hammock rotation. My right arm comes in front and I pin the legs toward me, creating a compression and a tightness. My hands come to the lower back and I start to circle. As I'm coming forward, I lean in. As I lean back, I bring the lower back with me and rotating, decompressing the lower spine. I can play with my hands as well, almost like kitten mittens when cats come and purr and knead. So I'm kneading the lower back along the spine. I can catch right above the pelvic ridge, the iliac crest. I can even do a little harmonic where I'm pulsing toward me and I can keep rotating. Creating a traction with my arm and my legs. Beautiful. I come up high, my palms, my soft palms, meet right above the, the pecs, the pectoral minor is what we're working on. So right in this shoulder crease, there's a little pocket. We call it long one in Chinese medicine. It's the first meridian point of the lung channel. So we're working the lungs here. The letting go point. So when we really hold tension, we hold grief. When we're holding on to attachment, when we're grieving, we pull inward. And when we let go, we open up. And that's what we're working on here. Back and forth. We walk our way all the way down the arms, finding a perfect fit. So my entire hand finds a perfect glove meeting Juliet's arms. Coming down to the hands and resting for a moment, I can even place my forehead on the solar plexus. As we start this conversation with the nervous system, soft, gentle contact. Remembering that the pauses are just as important as the movement. A song with all of the notes and no pauses is a very terrible song. We bring our hands, our middle fingers and third fingers to the back of the neck and the runway of my elbow, the forearm, 
we press on that long one point. As we press down with our forearms, we lift up in the back of the neck on either side of the spinal cord, either side of the neck. And breathe. Compressing down, lifting up. And breathing. Our thumbs can go to the jaw, we can press in. Gently releasing. Again, my soft palms, my cat-like paws can come to either side of the belly button in the soft part of the belly. And very gently, we can just start massaging the belly, waking the digestion up back and forth. No need for strong pressure, but we are leaning in and really diving into the tissue. Notice my hips are moving with my arms, my whole body is involved in each gesture. Like a lion and its cub. My right hand comes to the heart. My left hand can come to the hand or the wrist. And again, just taking a moment of breath. Aligning your breath with your partners. Nowhere to be, nothing to do. Slowly coming up. The bottom leg, I find the ankle to lift. I bring the leg out toward my knee so I can unhook the leg closest to me and I come back to the hammock. Bring the legs together, lift again from the ankles. I come out of the conversation. My left arm comes underneath, and now I'm supporting both and making a helicopter. Watch my body, it goes in a circle. So I'm not using only my arms, I'm using my entire body. Bringing the knees close to the chest, using momentum. I can change directions. Decompressing the hips, the spine. Beautiful. Lifting up, standing up, engaging the legs. So I lift straight up to protect the knees from locking. Right leg I place down, left leg I start to engage. Coming back down, stepping across. My right leg steps across the leg and I find a single leg hammock this time. What's really important here is finding this perfect fit from the kneecap underneath and on top of my leg. Once I find that, I simply press down and lean back. So I press down on the ankle and pull back and all of a sudden, all of the fascia, the interconnected tissue, the connective tissue, pulls the lower back. And we start decompressing the hip socket, the hip joint, the lower back, the muscles, the vertebrae, and I'm simply just leaning back with this traction. If I don't press, we don't get that same traction. So it really is this lever to open up the back body and breathe. My left hand is underneath the lower back where the SI joint is, the sacroiliac joint, where the sacrum meets the iliac crest. It's this little dimple in the lower back, and we can just gently encourage the movement downward toward us. Not pulling the gentle traction. Beautiful. We bring the leg in closer. I open the left arm out to give myself some space. My right knee finds the earth. So I do a twist down. My left knee is up. My left hand finds her right side. And I press just for a moment. 
Now I'm gonna switch my hands. So my right hand now finds the diagonal. My left hand finds the lower back. So I'm making a twist, compression and extension at the same time. So my left forearm lines the lower back. You won't be able to see this, unfortunately. But I'm gonna do the other side so you can. So we find the cross and it'll be your left hand finds that lower back encouraging and opening. So again, it's that gentle traction toward me. My pressure comes from this leg. So I press with my outside leg, opening the lower back. I can even bring both hands to the lower back and add a gentle harmonic here, a gentle pulse. My arms are straight, my back is straight. I'm sitting with integrity in my spine, making this sustainable for me. I'm not using any of my force. I'm pressing against the earth. Breathing. Pulling. Beautiful. So we're going to move toward the side. So we open that arm up, we get our pillow ready. We can place the pillow right next to our partner's head. And watch what happens. We bring this arm closer to us, run it down and find what's called a buddy grip. So we find this grip, we lean back, pulling the fascia and watch her head, it just bloop, pops right on. We bring the arm down, we support the shoulder blade and simply press the arm back down to the earth. And I have one knee out and one knee in. I wanna have both knees in. We call this a table. So I lift the leg up, place my hand down to support myself and bring my knee in and then buckle up. So I bring her leg close to my belly and find this right angle. We're about to do our monk praying, but first we just take a minute to make full contact, maybe a hand on the sacrum, the lower back, and breathe. Allowing the body to adjust to this larger movement as we've just turned positions. And this is a wonderful time to check back in. How's my spine? Am I sitting up straight? Am I comfortable? Am I breathing? When we love ourselves, we can love another. So focusing first on the health of my body so that I can give from that place of integrity. Again, the forearms, the runway, we gently find a place on this expansive IT band, the outside of the leg. We are mindful of the knee and mindful of the hip, so we wanna find a, a more centered location. And we simply just place our forearms and lean. So we start soft. And we just gently allow gravity to begin the compression. This is usually a really tender spot for a lot of people. And here our principle is, if we move slowly, we can reach deep. The slower we move, the deeper we go. So really gently at a gradient, Diving in lower and lower and lower. Slow and deep. One of my teachers used to say LSD, long, slow and deep. And we gently take an inhale and come out and we can find a new position. So maybe we come a little further out, still mindful of the knee and the hip. 
And again, starting this journey of leaning, 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 leaning. I'm not pressing, I'm just leaning my weight down. Feeling my partner's breath. We come out of this position and we start to percuss. We use percussion. So we're just gently batting the lower back, the sacrum, the hips, the hip socket along that same line to start moving blood and chi. This is a wonderful practice. Don't un underestimate percussion. You can find anywhere along this back body. You can even go up the back, starting to wake up these energy lines, the meridians. Moving any tension, any stuckness, this is to wake that up, to create dynamicism in the body. And we'll end in five seconds, and we'll end abruptly, and then we'll contain the energy. So four, three, two, one, and then pause and hold. Giving the body a chance to integrate. You might feel the deep breath in and deep exhale from the person. <sighs> Beautiful. So now we'll come out of the conversation, meaning my body's coming out. So I press my right hand down, my left hand lifts the knee. And I keep contact the entire time. So I'm, something of my body is always touching something of their body. So I slowly come out, placing the knee down gently. And again, finding some point of contact, I'm about to hop to the other side. So I come across, my left hand touches. And I come down on my knees. Now we're working with this area right now. So you can be sitting on your knees. You can be sitting to the side. This is actually the most comfortable for me. Or you can be sitting here as well with your knee up for pressure so that you can press on the earth. So I'm bringing my elbow into this area. The first thing I do is just start looking around. So I use my thumbs or my, the pads of my wrist, my hand, my palms to start massaging this area for two reasons. One is for me to just look around and curiously explore where there's tension or where there might be some stuckness or trauma or a story we call it in the body, where there are stories. Oh, and we might find, oh, there's some tension. And just noting that. And the second reason is to get the nervous system of my partner this is us co like communicating to the nervous system to say, hey, I'm about to, we're about to go in here and it's knocking on the door. We're just knocking on the door and saying, hey, can I come in? We're not here to force anything. And we only go where we're invited, when we're invited in. We can't make a story go away. We can't make trauma go away. That's not our purpose. Our purpose is to encourage and support my partner's nervous system. So find a point, usually along the bone, right below the bone is a really good point. We have this acetabulum bone, the head of the femur, right around there is a really wonderful point. And we have right below the iliac crest, like the pelvic bowl are really good points as well. And then we also have one right in the middle of the bum. All of these are associated with the gallbladder. So I find my elbow and I move a little bit further down from my elbow. So I'm not using the point of the elbow, I'm using just below. And my hand is soft. So I find a point. I place my other hand maybe on the lower back or on the back as a mothering hand, as a nurturing hand. And we take a deep inhale. And I gently lean. The softer my hand is, the less tension my body has. When I have less tension in my body, it's like less noise in the way of being able to listen to Juliet's body. 
So I'm listening with my whole body. And typically on the exhale, I'll feel just a gentle expansiveness or openness in the tissue. And that's an invitation inward. If there's no invitation, I don't go deeper. I'm not pressing, I'm pouring weight. Nesting and pouring. Deepening slowly. My drag, if there's any traction, is toward me, so it's not to compress the lower back, it's to expand the lower back or extend. So if there's any traction, it's back toward me. Taking one more inhale. And we come out on the inhale, so there's an exhale. And then we gently, with the inhale, come out. And we'll find two more spots. So I can use my thumb again and look along that ridge. Find a place that feels right intuitively. Find the elbow. Wait for the inhale, exhale. And on the exhale, we dive. Listening. Being fully in this conversation listening for tension. And her nervous system will tell me what I need to do. Listening deeper and deeper and deeper. Oh. And finding one more point. We can do this for a lot longer, but for this session, we'll just do one more point. listening with the whole body. Beautiful. So we come up toward the shoulders. We'll find our way onto our knees. I'm going to take my hand and find the front of the pelvis, this hook. And I just lean toward me to bring the hips stacked so the hips are in line. And I'm gonna work on the shoulder, so I want the shoulder to be in line as well. So with both hands, as I come up toward the shoulder, my knees get wide, so I'm in a strong stance. I lift the arm with both hands. So I take my right hand on the inside, my left hand finds the elbow, I lift and support. And then my left elbow finds her left elbow. So I find this perfect fit and find a hammock. My left palm finds the front of her shoulder. My right palm finds the entire scapula, the entire um, shoulder blade. And with my body, I just start to make huge rotations. The shoulder comes up toward the ear, pulls back toward me, down toward the feet, and I just rotate rolling around, opening the shoulder blade, creating space under the scapula, any tension in the shoulder. Our shoulders carry so much tension, so much heat. As heat rises, like a fire, heat rises in our body as well, and it often gets caught in what we call the bottleneck, where the shoulders meet the neck. There's this like bottleneck. We call it the traffic jam because the energy moving up wants to escape, but it gets caught right in this area. And so opening with spaciousness starts to release the heat and tension in this area. When heat rises, what do we feel? Anger, frustration, annoyance. So we're opening this space using my full body. Again, no force finding our perfect fit and being curious. I can change directions. I can get further in. I can use my fingers also to squeeze and play. 
as we dive in. Find the edges, find the limits. And what does that mean? When we feel a resistance from her body, that's the limit. And then I can just play in that area. I can very gently and very precisely move back and forth and listen deeper. I lift my elbow up and her elbow, my right hand meets the wrist and both hands bring her arm all the way back down. Beautiful. I turn and face the body and we're gonna cat paw all the way down. So you'll see my back for a minute, but I'm on top of the spine. So we have the spine running all the way down and above we have this little gutter. My palms find and you'll actually be knees wide, straight back and pressing like cat pawing down. It'll push the hips back down, that's totally fine. And we cat paw all the way up and down. We walk the bladder lines. So our bladder meridians run up and down the spine. And we just gently go up and down a few times with the breath. I'm in a different position than you so you can still see me. <laughs> but we're basically walking up and down. Sinking in. And when we get down toward the sacrum, we make two dragon's mouths. So we find this mouth. Again, I'm on my toes. My knees are wide. I find this dragon's mouth right along the lower back. So there's these soft lower back, the lumbar spine that houses the kidneys. So we're finding the kidneys and we're squeezing and every inhale, we pause. Exhale, we lean forward and squeeze. Inhale, pause. Exhale, lean forward and squeeze. So we're deepening into that space deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And, deeper. and after about five breaths, about two thirds of the way into the inhale, we release very quickly. It'll be like lightning. So I'm waiting for this exhale sinking deeper. And as she inhales, I pull back really quickly and then meet the body. Charging this area, bringing energy and chi and blood and prana into this area into the lower back. We pause here for about 10 breaths. And then my belly finds the lower back. So we're regulating the nervous system here. So I come across the body. I bring my belly to the lower back and gently lean forward, finding a perfect fit and breathing together. What's that? Yeah. So we hang out there for about 10 or 15 breaths. And breathe, regulating that nervous system together. We call this co-regulating. As we breathe, we activate the parasympathetic nervous system our rest and digest nervous system that allows our body to start repairing, repairing the windows and the doors that we've been meaning to repair. Take about three more breaths. On the inhale, we slowly come up, continuing to make contact. And we start to walk all the way down the body, keeping contact, finding our way down, bending this leg. My left leg comes across, my right leg comes up. And we're working on this lower leg line, still the bladder line. So I find a comfortable position, we call this monkey. And we just simply start pouring weight back and forth. If the leg is a bit out of alignment, we can bring the knee 
straight in line and continue to pour weight. Again, I can use my full body, so I'm not pressing. My elbows are straight as I lean in like a big cat, finding a perfect fit. And listening to the body. If there's a tension or there's a reaction, we can pause and reevaluate. Does that feel better? Sore? Okay. <laughs> this could be a very tender area. So again, remember, tender is wonderful. That's what we're doing. We're doing therapy. Long, slow, and deep. That's what we're focusing on. Beautiful. We can also be on the other side as well, so our right knee can be down. And our left knee can be up. This works too. Does that feel better? It is also good. Okay. We can bring our hands to the calf. And the calf likes what we call a cross tension, cross fiber. So we pull the muscle off the bone. So we're doing this back and forth grip and pull like a tiger's mouth, pulling it off the bone. And we can squeeze as well, squeezing all the way up. Lifting the leg, as we bring the leg down, we can work the foot as well. So her leg is coming outward rotation. We wanna gently pull back, open the heel so that the foot pulls inward and we can just gently compress the leg or the foot and we can work the calf here as well. Pressure on the foot, back and forth. Finding yourself in a comfortable position. What I'm looking like may not be comfortable for you. It might be both knees out, we call this grasshopper. But finding a straight back. Beautiful. Okay. We'll bring our partner back onto their back and notice how I'm still making contact. So as I come up higher, making contact with my knee. Thank you. And the easiest way to bring someone back onto their back is we hook the knee, we bring the knee towards the chest and their body will just roll over and we're keeping an eye on their upper hand and their upper arm as well. So I hook the bottom of the knee, I get out of the conversation, so I find space, and as I pull, I swing the knee up toward the chest, the whole body comes and I catch the arm, and now I have control over the knee. And I'm gonna hold that for a minute, and we can take out the pillow, beautiful. And come all the way down, I have the leg. I'm coming up. I switch hands so my right arm grabs the ankle and I come inward so my feet are inward, my face is pointing outward. Mindful of the knee, I place her leg right in the crease of my ankles. And we're going to do our Ganesha sit. We call this a blood stop. So I just simply sit back, watching the ankle, watching the knee, and I'm sitting right between them. If it's uncomfortable, you can lift and find another spot. Again, remember, if I'm comfortable, then that's what I'm offering. The frequency that I'm sitting in is what I'm offering. If I bake a cake, I can give people that cake. If I don't have a cake, I can't give that cake away. So finding this like really deep, blissful comfort and pleasure in your body, because that releases the tension and when I have no tension in my body, I can listen to the body sitting next to me. When my body stops talking, I can start listening. Sitting up tall. Can use my hands as what we call mothering hands or nurturing hands, maybe on the foot. And just softly supporting the nervous system.
our blood stop is exactly that. We're compressing the tissue to stop the blood flowing to the leg for a moment. And then when we decompress, we inhale and sit up. There's a flush of fresh blood moving toward the foot. We grab the ankle and lift up. My left hand supports me as I do the same thing deeper inward. So I come all the way up to the hip and we're gonna do one more Ganesha sit. You can lift the leg high like a lever, find a comfortable spot and sit back. Again, compressing the leg, mindful of the knee. So we're not sitting on the knee and compressing the tissue, creating like a hose, like a kink in a hose. So that blood, chi can move to these outer extremities and we can get a fresh cycle of blood to clean anything out, to clean any inflammation, any bruising, any tenderness, more fresh blood to the muscles. It's a wonderful technique. Again, my left hand is just gently resting in the lower belly. You can find the solar plexus. My right hand can find the inner leg as these beautiful cicadas start to sing. I'm soft and I'm listening with my whole body. And I'm breathing. We're both in meditation. So we're gonna cross the body in just a moment. And this is gonna be a big step. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take the arm across and just gently hold on to it. This is our first point of contact. We come up and we lift the leg. So we step out of the conversation and let the leg back down. And I'm still holding this arm as I support myself, step across and keep this contact. I pin the fascia, so this interconnective tissue. We basically press our thumbs right on the wrist and I pin, so I squeeze and gently lean back. You'll see their head will gently start to move towards you. It means the whole body is connected by this amazing like saran wrap that wraps around the muscles and the tendons and the bones. And I'm just gently pulling towards me. Now it's not a pulling, it's a gentle traction. We call this reciprocal tension. So the elbow is taut, it's not hanging but I'm not really yanking. It's this really beautiful medium. You can check in with your partner and say, hey, is this too much? It can be pretty intense depending on how hard we're pulling. Does it feel okay? So it's just this gentle unraveling, this gentle traction. And the fascia, this interconnective tissue is like a storehouse for the stories of our life, for the trauma of the body. And we're just gently encouraging that to unravel, to soften. It's like plowing and sowing the land. And when the land is supple and fresh and vibrant, then we can take things out and put things in. The soil is like more fertile. And that's what we're doing. We can offer a gentle shake, like a pulse, and this just helps encourage the fascia to let go. It's like rocking relieves tension. And breathing. Beautiful. We find a pause, we move the pillow, and we find what's called a belly bite. So we lift the arm, my right knee comes down, my left knee comes up in a monkey, and I place the wrist right in between my hip, or my side body, and my leg, and I squeeze. So it's in the soft part underneath my ribs. 
And I'm doing a gentle squeeze here so she feels, her nervous system feels held. And then I bring both hands along the rib cage and the chest and the pectoral muscle, being mindful of the breasts if we're working on a woman. And we just gently... And we gently find a harmonic. So we're pressing and creating this gentle rocking motion for the body. I don't need to pull back, I just push, release, push, release, push, release, push, release. And we say rocking relieves tension. So we're just like unraveling, again, unraveling all the stories in the nervous system, letting everything release. We're encouraging this fluid motion of water in the body. If we're doing this right, we'll see the entire body moves. Her feet are moving. Our entire body's connected, connected through water. And this gentle flow calms the nervous system. And again, it's the same thing. When the parasympathetic nervous system, the rest and digest, is activated. When we're feeling soft and tender, that's when we can take things out. That's when we can really release the trauma. That's when we can really go in the house and work. If there's tension in the body of my partner, I'm not going anywhere. It's like armor. So we're first de-armoring. So there's nowhere to go. There's no pace fast. When we move quickly, there's tension. When we move quickly, there's protection. So we move slowly and deeply. We can move the hands up and down. We can even move it to the hips. Gently releasing tension throughout the entire spinal cord, the entire nervous system. Ah. We can encourage sound with our voice as they breathe. Ah, and finding a pause, keeping your hands connected. Beautiful. We take the arm out, we lift high. Now watch what happens. My left knee comes down, my right knee comes across. And we do another blood stop. So we place the forearm, or sorry, we place her bicep where my ankle is, and then bring the other side of the arm, we make a right angle. So I bring the forearm across and up. I just gently sit back and her arm is placed right where my ankle is, the ankle crease. And I sit back, creating a compression on that arm. And I just gently support the wrist. I'll come to the other side as well so you can see a little bit better. But just gently sitting there and breathing. So both knees come across. My left leg comes up. And my outer leg. Finding that perfect fit in the ankle and then sitting back. Supporting the wrist. Compressing the blood. So that fresh blood and cheek can come into that area. Wonderful wrist therapy. Wonderful first shoulder therapy. There's injuries in the forearm and the wrist and the hands. This is a great way to get fresh blood and chi into that space. And we sit for about 10 breaths. Now we do the same thing for the forearm now. So I'll come up. Wait for a moment just to have that rush of blood come and I turn toward her face. So my right hand comes, or my, it'll be your left hand, comes and finds the wrist, lifts, and I spin my knees toward her face. And then I do the same thing with the forearm. So I situate her forearm right on my ankle and I sit back. And we do the same thing. We sit up tall, I can place my left hand on the heart or my right hand I can even place on the top of her head or on her arm and breathing. 
Compressing the tissues. Gently coming up. My outer arm finds the wrist, extending the arm back down, and we come up toward the head, keeping contact. Beautiful. Finding our way toward the head. My hands come underneath, and I just gently lift up on these two points that we found at the very beginning of the practice. So it's the back of the head along either side of the spine. My fingers just gently pull up and toward me. So we're creating an extension in the spine, in the cervical spine or the cervical spine, where the neck is. We're gently contracting and pulling back toward us. and breathing. Over the next 10 breaths, you'll just feel a softening and softening and softening around your fingers. So we find a point of tension, so we're pressing in and just gently allow the body and the neck to melt away around. As we're witnessing this incredible human being, this universe, that resides below us. We find a softening of the hands, continue making contact on what's called the occiput, the occipital ridge. There's this bone at the back of the head and you'll find a little gap. We place our fingers very softly and gently in that space and simply hold, no tension. receiving this being. Simply allowing a moment of resting together. We can be here for five, even 10 minutes. If that feels called. It's a wonderful, wonderful resting place together that basically communicates with the nervous system. We have a lot of nerves that come into our brain in the space. It's a very tender and very vulnerable space. And when we just simply bring presence, we call it this part of craniosacral therapy. We're resting our hands on the back of the cranium, connecting to the entire nervous system all the nerves that run up and down the spine, the life force, the softness, the tenderness, the memories, the stories of this person's life. And we're not trying to fix, we're not trying to change, we're just simply sitting in this beautiful, allowing, accepting, welcoming, loving, You are welcome here as you are. You are loved as you are. Making sure we're in a comfortable position. We can shampoo the head so we bring our fingers to the sides of the head. Opa. And squeeze digging into the scalp, the sides of the scalp, working with the gallbladder. This is a gallbladder meridian. Releasing any tension in the mind, relieving any thoughts as we start to shampoo the head. Not so much using our nails, rather the pads of our fingers. So we're getting deep, we're not scratching. It 
taking a few moments of this, we'll find our thumbs on the third eye, pulling up and out along the hairline down toward the temple. We can actually use quite a bit of pressure here. So my thumb finds the third eye, I press down and drag toward me as I open toward the temple around. Third eye, our true vision, that which allows us to step into the mystical world. We ignite the pineal gland, we release DMT, the God molecule. This is our connection to the divine, or one of many. We find our thumbs resting right in between, right where the eyebrow meets the ridge of the nose. Each thumb rests on either side and we gently breathe. We're not pressing, we're just resting here. Like the weight of a quarter or a dime or a colonis if you're in Costa Rica. <laughs> and breathing. On either side of the nose, below the eyes, we find on the cheeks, our stomach lines. We find a thumb on each. We press down to clear the sinuses, wrap around the cheekbones, and up, and we do it again. Thumb finds our stomach point coming around. We find our fingers on the jawline of the chin and pinch from inward to outward. So moving out toward the jaw, we can do this two or three times. Gently finding below the teeth and pinching out. My hands make cups that are sealed. So the fingers are sealed together. I wrap my hand, my palm, around the ear on either side, creating a vacuum. So my hand is compressing gently on the ears to bring a vacuum to give our partner a moment of inwardness to encourage this inward exploration before we end our practice. Taking 10 to 15 breaths here. This expansive inner world, the universe that lies within us. Witnessing, expanding, exploring diving deeply into this space. I close my eyes, I fall into the void with my partner, into this expansive nothingness. I gently release, bringing my left hand to the heart. My right thumb finds the third eye. I'm not comfortable right now, so I can't offer her that comfort. So I actually just change my position. I adjust, 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 and find contact. And breathing together. I gently on the inhale, come off and any excess energy I often take a moment to clean this can look different for you but I clean away any excess energy that might still be lingering around taking it away and just my hands come to heart center and I just take a moment to bow to this incredible human being in honor and devotion for these teachings and practices and those who have brought this lineage before us for the beautiful and sacred space that we are able to create as human beings together on this incredible planet. In deep honor and reverence 
for the intimacy, for the time, for the trust, for the, the beauty that lies in the connection between the lines underneath the surface. Thank you the teachers who came before. Thank you those who created this practice, who have passed this practice down in its purity and developed this practice of love and tenderness and growth. And we gently allow our partner in their own time to come back to their space. I would recommend washing our hands and our face after working so deeply with someone else's nervous system and story as we really dive into their world, coming back to ourselves, coming back to our groundedness within ourselves. When we step out of the way, something bigger comes through. And when we touch one thing with deep awareness, we touch everything. Thank you guys for being a part of this practice today. I encourage having a conversation with your partner afterwards and checking in and seeing how they're doing, if they need support in any way, whatever they want to share. You can share your experience as well. Drink some tea together. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Namaste. Pause the stuff and I'll work on your wrist. Yes. How are you doing? <laughs>